Hi, I am Kathy Dykstra. I design patterns, which I sell in my Etsy shop, and I have just recently started doing some sew-alongs to go with the patterns. So this sew-along is for the Maddie pattern, which is one of my newest ones. I think it's an adorable pattern. It's suitable for all levels of seamstresses. Uh, this is one of the versions that I've done, and this one is a topper that I paired up with uh, my, you know, just a simple bloomers pattern to go with it. It could also be worn with uh, shorts or capri pants. Um, it can be made up as a jumper. So this is a feather whale corduroy, and this can be worn with a little blouse underneath. And then it can also be made, um, you know, as a cute little sundress. So I, I just love this vintage style. Let's see if I can get the whole thing in here. Um, this is the cutest pattern. It's got a lot of flair to it. And I think little girls and their moms are gonna love this. And it comes in sizes six month to a four. Wasn't sure that the uh, open sides would be suitable for larger than that, so I stopped at a size four. So today I'm talking about gathering up your supplies for the sew along, which will start in a couple days. I'll give you a couple days to get started. And of course these videos will stay up so you can follow along at any time that you like. The first thing you're gonna need is obviously the pattern. And I will put a link to my Etsy shop with the pattern below. I like to print the pattern and then I like to view the instructions on my iPad. Uh, that works great as far as I'm concerned because one of the things that you can do is zoom in really uh, large on some of the details. And I find that to be helpful uh, you know, particularly with the diagrams, if you can zoom in quite large. Obviously, you can print the instructions if you prefer to have them printed. This is a layered pattern, so you can print just the size that you're going to make. And I know a lot of people really prefer that. So if you are new to layered patterns, I do have a video on how to print just the layer that you want. And I will also put a link to that below. So you're gonna gather up the supplies that you need. Uh, I shop in my own personal stash because I have enough supplies to, uh, well, I think my supplies will outlive me. So I have selected this cute uh, polka dot piquet fabric for the main dress fabric. And this is a fabric finders piquet. I don't know if it's still available because who knows how long it's been aging in my stash. And then I have the coordinating stripe that I will use for the contrast uh, bias strips that go around the shoulders and the hem. And I haven't yet decided if I'm gonna use piping around the neckline. If I do, I would use the stripe for that as well. And then I just need a small piece of batiste for the lining. So I've got those things. And then as I was selecting my <coughs> fabrics, uh, I kind of like to use the rickrack trim. I think that adds a lot. And so I wanted to show you how we do that in this sew along also, but is this not the cutest rickrack? So uh, it just seemed to work perfectly with this one. So I'm gonna try that. I don't know what these bumps, how that's gonna work hiding underneath the bias band. If I don't like it, I'll move on to plan B, but that is the current plan. Uh, you're also going to need a zipper. And again, I've shopped my stash and I had the right size pink zipper in a regular nylon zipper. So that's what I'll be using. You can also use an invisible zipper if that's what you prefer to use. And then you're gonna need uh, just a small piece of interfacing because I always place interfacing behind the zipper. So it's like two, two strips that are one inch long and the length of your zipper, which I recommended a nine inch zipper. So um, you will have to cut them by the pattern piece because there's a slight curve to the center back of the pattern. But you just need a small little piece of a, an iron-on baby weight interfacing. 
Some optional items, you obviously need a marking tool to mark your dots and stuff where you're gonna pivot. I like to use the blue washout markers. I feel like they work fabulously. They've always come out for me, it hasn't been a problem. So I like that. And unless you're using a color that the blue won't show up, um, you can use something different. But uh, a marking tool of some sort. Some of the optional items that I'll be using in the sew along. I always, I love this little um, stainless steel spatula. And I like to use this to turn the curves for the tabs on the side. Uh, if you're turning out a squared area, you can use the squared off end. But this is nice because you can use it under with the iron. So you can push the corners out and uh, keep this in it's long enough, you're not gonna burn your fingers. Um, and I'll show you that when we get to that point. The other two optional items that I like to use, um, and you can decide if this is what you wanna use as well, but I use the uh, wash away, when I'm, the glue based it, the Roxanne's glue based it. That comes in really handy for positioning your piping and for positioning this rick rack. It'll keep it in place so that it doesn't shift around while you're trying to sew it. Uh, it has a nice, very fine applicator tip. Um, so I like to use that. And another product that I'll be using, and you don't have to have this, but I like the Superior Vanish Extra and it is a water soluble basting thread. And I'll show you how cleverly we can use this to do the lining for the tabs inside. And if you don't have it, you can see how I use it. And if you decide to get it, I mean, that's fine. There's other ways that you can do these tabs without it. And then obviously your usual sewing supplies, your scissors and thread and all that stuff. So, I will let you gather up your supplies uh, and in a couple days I will post the first video with the sew along. This shouldn't take too many videos because it's a very simple pattern and um, hopefully it will be a very popular one. It's really cute. Oh, and I didn't think about it. I also need four buttons uh, because we do put the little buttons on the tabs here. and. They can be whatever you want, so I guess I forgot about that, but you will need four buttons, and I recommend between five-eighths and one inch, and again, for me, that depends on the size that I'm making and whatever I happen to have available in my rather extensive stash. So I will see you back in a couple days, and I hope to see a lot of really cute finished Maddies when we're finished with this. If you enjoyed this and enjoyed some of the other videos that I've got posted, uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button below and then you won't miss out on any of the future videos.